We are going to talk today about how to count the number of cells in a cell suspension using a hemocytometer. So this is a specialized type of slide that was originally developed in order to count blood cells, hence the root of the word hemocytometer referring to heme of blood. And this is still used today in many different applications. So for example, if you're working in a research lab doing cell culture, and you need to passage your cells, you need to know how many cells from flask one to add to flask two in order to get the right concentration. So you would count how many cells in flask one using hemocytometer and then do your calculations for the, for the experiment. You can also use these in medicine if you want to see how many abnormal blood cells compared to normal blood cells in a sample where an automated cell counter may not be able to distinguish between abnormal and normal cells. Additionally, in um, brewing, you can use this to assess yeast uh, cultures that you're going to use for your brewing. So there are many applications in which this type of cell counting is still used. So here we have the base of the slide, which is a thick, heavy glass. And in the center, there are two metal plates in this example. And each of these plates, as we'll see in a second, has a grid on that plate that you can see when you look at this slide under the microscope. Hemocytometers have specialized cover slips with a specific size and weight in order to um, count cells reliably over several samples. And so you see here, here's the cover slip that's on top of the slide. And in order to load your cell suspension, you add a small volume of that suspension here in this indent, and then capillary action pulls that cell suspension over the grid and you can load both sides at the same time, and then you can do multiple counts on your cell suspension and take an average for better results. So this is a schematic of the grid you'll see when you look at the slide under the microscope. And you'll notice that we have this separated into nine boxes. And each of these boxes is subdivided into a certain number of smaller areas. And so if we want to calculate volume of cells, so number of cells per milliliter or per microliter, what we can do is we can calculate the area of where we count, and then we can divide the number of cells we count by that area. So you'll notice that these squares have a known um, size, so it's one millimeter by one millimeter. And then in between the cover slip and the slide is 0.1 millimeters. So we can use those measurements to calculate volume of what we are counting, okay? And when you add your cell suspension and zoom in on the microscope, this, for example, could be all of square three that you saw in that last schematic. And so all of these little dots are cells. And so what you would do is count cells in some of these areas, okay? And I'm gonna walk you through how you would do these calculations, okay? So, Let's start so first with um, a volume calculation. So let's talk about square number three. Okay. So square number three is one millimeter by one millimeter. And then remember the area between the cover slip and the slide is 0.1 millimeter. So if you remember, one centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter volume. And in order to calculate volume based on these measurements, we first need to convert millimeters to centimeters prior to making a calculation. If you calculate millimeters cubed and then try to convert to milliliters, it will be incorrect. Okay, so the difference between millimeters and centimeters is a factor of 10. So this is the same as saying 0.1 centimeters by 0.1 centimeters by 0.01 centimeters. And this is going to give us 1 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4 centimeters cubed, which is the same as saying 1 times 10 to the negative 4 millimeters. Okay? So we're going to use this idea of length times width times depth to calculate volume in different ways. Okay, so when you're using a hemocytometer after you've applied your cell suspension, you should count the area you need in order to reach 200 cells. 
So, for example, if you can count 200 cells in this small area of box one, then stop counting. If you can count 200 cells in two rows of box six, then you would calculate the volume that you've counted in box six and divide 200 cells by that volume. So let's walk through an example. Let's say that we count 200 cells in three rows of box nine, okay? So if you're counting along and you reach 200 cells in this final square, but there are still more cells, keep counting until you finish that entire area. All right, so we know that across box nine is 0.1 millimeters, and here box nine is broken into four sections. So if we've counted three rows, we've counted 0.75 millimeters. So we counted in one millimeter, by 0 0.75 millimeters by 0 0.1 millimeters. So remember that 0 0.1 is the space between the cover slip and the slide. We'll convert this to centimeters. And then do the math out and we'll get 7.5 times 10 to the negative one two, three, four, five. Okay, and centimeters cubed is the same as millimeters. So we can just say milliliters for our units. So if we've counted 200 cells, and we counted that in 7.5 times 10 to the negative five milliliters. If we do that math out, we get 2.67 times 10 to the 6 cells per mil. Okay. All right, so I want to show you another way to do this calculation as well. So we'll say that we counted 200 cells again in those three rows of box 9. And this time, let's think about how much of this box we counted. Okay, so we have 200 cells. And we know that square nine is the equivalent of one times 10 to the negative four mils. Okay. And we have counted 12 out of 16 squares of box nine. Okay, so this is four by four, we counted three rows. So in the denominator, denominator we'll write one times 10 to the negative four mils, and we counted 12 of 16 squares in box nine. And the math for this will end up the same as the other way we calculated. So 2.67 times 10 to the six cells per mil. So once you have this calculation, you may need to back calculate from a dilution. So say you have a really concentrated suspension of cells, so you've already diluted it one to 10 before applying it to your hemocytometer. So this would be the concentration of that one to 10 dilution. So this is a, a one to 10 of stock. And so to back calculate that, you'll need to multiply your count by so this would end up being 2.67 times 10 to the 7 cells per mil in the original 